Restaurants are a distinctly urban phenomenon in many ways. Recent innovations have been billed as being the harbingers of a sharing economy, but cities have always been about sharing. What is a restaurant but a shared dining room, a shared kitchen? But even though some form of urban you know, sharing of eating has been going on for millennia, there were so-called thermopolia in Pompeii 2,000 years ago, the restaurant is really a more modern invention that came about in Ancien Regime Paris. So we're thrilled, Rebecca, that you're here. Tell us about how it happened. What was, what happened, what was before restaurants? How did the, this change occur? Okay, so what you need to know is that for, as you said, millennia, uh, centuries, there had, of course, been many ways to eat out. In fact, most people were too poor to have kitchens, so most of their food did get prepared outside of their own homes if we're thinking about an urban mm -hmm. setting. But what's distinctive about restaurants is that people go to restaurants even though they don't have to. Mm -hmm. Restaurants are the moment at which it becomes enjoyable to go out to eat. Or rather, in the first restaurants from the 1760s and the 1770s, a restaurant was a place where you went out not to eat. So uh, it has some link to the word restore, no? It, it's, a, it's, it's a sort of funny thing. It does, it's not about, about luscious overindulgence. It has, it has a totally different origin, right? That's right. So as you say, the word restaurant comes from the French verb se restaurer, which means to restore or to refresh. Mm -hmm. And what's being restored or refreshed is your appetite. Mm -hmm. For people who are too sensitive, and the key term is weak of chest, mm -hmm. to eat an evening meal, they can instead go to this special establishment that's called a restaurateur's room. And there, they will be restored. Their health will be restored. So the key thing you need to know is that the first restaurant is also the first health food restaurant. <laughs> and what were they serving? Um, well, they were serving uh, what the contemporary uh, food writer, Helen Rosner, who writes for Eater, mm -hmm. what she calls princess food. <laughs> uh, so they were serving things that uh, were white and mm -hmm. pretty. Uh, so rice pudding, chicken consomme, water from the king's wells, mm -hmm. wine that was marked as specifically not adulterated, mm -hmm. and their main feature, the reason why you went to a restaurateur's room, was that they served a kind of bouillon known as a restaurant, a restorative bouillon. A bouillon made of large quantities of very high quality meat sweated over very high heat. Hmm. Don't add any water. There are other places where a restaurant is specifically defined as being a waterless soup. So it's basically meat juice. And the idea of having meat juice is you need the nutritive value, mm -hmm. but you're too weak to actually digest it yourself. So how do we get the move from bullion to more robust forms of, of eating? From right. So from the very beginning, these places called restaurants are distinguished by having small separate tables, so mm -hmm. they don't have a host's table, by having menus, mm -hmm and by having flexible meal hours. Uh, mm -hmm. So again, an innkeeper or a caterer, dinner was at one. Right. The restaurant innovates in all three of those parts of how service is done. In the beginning, it's serving these restorative bouillons. But then, well, maybe your appetite does get restored, mm -hmm. and maybe a few oysters wouldn't go amiss. Mm. And if you're going to have oysters, then maybe you should have some champagne to go with the oysters. And if you're going to have oysters and champagne, well, then maybe you could eat just a little lamb cutlet. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of a creep going right, on there. Sure. But what really happens is that the innkeepers and the caterers see how popular the, this new style of service becomes. Mm -hmm so that you don't have to sit at the shared host's table, and you can arrive at any hour. Of course, that's good for innkeepers. Mm -hmm. They've got more customers coming mm -hmm. throughout the day. Um, and well, then you do have to have a menu. But so it's that style of service mm -hmm. that is the, the, the distinctive quality of a restaurant more in the long run than what they serve.